Welcome to the Modern Renaissance Man Show. We are now a show. My name is Ben Copeland. I'm the Modern Renaissance Man. Uh, we're coming to you somewhat live, and we like to have some fun. So uh, I try to minimize the editing of what you're going to see in this show. However, tonight I'm actually going to talk to you a little bit about some pictures and some, some uh, possibly some video that you're going to see. Uh, a little something different here that I will edit in after taping. But we're shooting now in July, the 18th. You'll be seeing this around the third Friday of September. And that actually plays into our theme we're going to be talking about later on tonight. Uh, but what I wanted to get into some current issues that are going on here in July. George Bush. You know, you may not like him. Uh, you may not like what he does. But I'll tell you what. Uh, I think it's pretty cool the way he bops over into Iraq. You know, it just next thing you know, he just shows up. I mean, it, it was really neat when he did it with the Thanksgiving deal. And the next thing you know, he's over there serving turkeys to the... Uh, to the military people over there. I thought that was so cool. And here he just did it again, you know, bopped over there and shows up in Iraq. And, uh, you know, I just think that's pretty neat. Now, I wonder his motive sometimes. Uh, personally, I, I sort of think it's maybe just that he wants to show that a Republican president can sneak around just as good as any Democrat president. <laughs> and, uh, and his wife is actually okay with it. So. <laughs> Bush, he's good at sneaking. So <laughs> we have to give him that. He's better than his predecessor. Um, Speaking of the Middle East, though, <laughs> as if I was, um, let's talk about taking vacations in the Middle East. Um, right now, I bet you can get some really good deals on cruises to uh, Cyprus. Uh, I bet you can get over to Israel pretty cheap. Uh, you know, Lebanon, I think, has got screaming deals, and they're offering free fireworks shows every night. Um, so check into uh, some of these uh, online vacation packages into the Middle East. I'll bet you get some great deals right now going into the Middle East. Uh, and the fireworks shows are free is what I understand. So uh, just show up and have a great time. Buy yourself a golf cart if you want to pretend you're rich. <laughs> have you noticed that? Uh, I haven't been to the beach recently, and then I've seen that also in Charlotte. You know, people get golf carts. You want to impress your neighbors, make them think you really come into, you know, into something big, buy a golf cart and ride around the neighborhood. Everybody's going to know, obviously, you got something going if you can afford a golf cart, because who else would just buy something like that to ride around the neighborhood? Uh, get a golf cart, pretend you're rich. And uh, I'm saving for mine now, and uh, that's going to come right after. Hopefully, I can save for the airplane, because then I can really say I'm rich, you know, if I have an airplane. Uh, an airplane and a golf cart. Ooh, I'm in the big time. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to make somebody's day, it's real simple. Here's the thing you can do, and you can make somebody's day just a great day. You're walking down the sidewalk, maybe quite a few people, hopefully, not a, a, not a nice lady sidewalk. Drop a quarter. Just drop a quarter on the sidewalk. If you're really, if you're one of these people with a golf cart, you can drop 50 cents. Um, <laughs> drop a quarter on the sidewalk. And just keep going. And you don't have to pay attention to it, but you'll know some point in that day, somebody's going to walk along and they're going to say, hey, there's a quarter. And they're going to pick up that quarter. And they're going to remember that for the rest of the day, something as simple as a quarter. And they're going to have a great day about, hey, I, I, at least I, hey, I found a quarter. You know, uh, I guess if you really want your strategy, you drop a dollar. And they're going to come out to the new dollar coins. You might could do that too. Uh, but just a quarter, you know, the average person can afford a quarter. And you can make somebody's day. Simple. I'm not always happy when I look down and I see a nice shiny quarter. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, at my job, I can get a drink machine uh, for a quarter. Not many places you can do that. Uh, but anyway, enough of this. I'm going to turn to what uh, is a little bit more of the serious side of the show. I call the soapbox. Uh, 
I debated on the issue that I wanted to go into uh, this evening, uh, more so than normal. Uh, this is an issue that's really important to me, but it's hard to really try to get a handle on it and where the problems actually lie. And what I titled this issue is the family-friendly world is starting to disappear. What I started noticing is that cities like Charlotte, they say they want to be family-friendly. But what can families do for free? What can they do and not have to pay to park to go somewhere? Most activities I noticed around Charlotte cost a significant amount of money. How family-friendly is this city? when everybody has to pay to do something as a family. Professional sports, for example, have you priced the tickets for the Bobcats or the Panthers, uh, even the uh, women's NBA? It's, le it's probably the more reasonable. Um, the checkers is probably still a reasonable. But still, you're looking at the amount of money that you have to spend. Plus, you've got to pay to park because it's all downtown and there's no free parking downtown. Uh, professional sports. It's not all that family friendly. They're catering more towards single young adults who got money that they can spend and not to families. Having been to the beach recently, I started noticing it there. I know for the last uh, 10 plus years, particularly Myrtle Beach has been talking about moving the young people away from the beach and off to these outside centers. Uh, the various theme parks and amusement parks that are basically out off the beach by at least a mile or so. And you know why they're doing it? So they can build the condos in the places and the big hotels in the places where the young people and the families used to go. So they're driving people out. And they're actually doing it once again. I just read this uh, thing in the paper, uh, which is the reason I went to the beach about the Myrtle Beach Pavilion, which we're going to talk a whole lot about tonight. Uh, that was a big thing for young people. But this guy said that they put up a fence and started charging admission because young people were loitering. I thought, well, that, that's good. At least they're not out doing dope and getting drunk. Uh, so what's wrong with that? Uh, but it's once again, it's not making money. They're not family friendly. Companies want to be family friendly, or so they say. I don't know of a single company that pays their employees to leave their jobs, go to their child's school for a school conference. Now they can arrange for some kind of personal PTO or they can take a vacation day or maybe uh, just outright lie and call in sick. Uh, but if they want to go to a conference for their child, yeah, it's not easy. And we're in a society of family values. If we want the family engaged with our children, make sure that you're supporting family to go to do these things. Be family friendly. The one that's really starting to crawl under my skin here lately, and this is one thing that I guess that sort of motivated me to go down this topic, was churches. I'm starting to see churches who are not family friendly. Can you believe that? And I don't care what the religion is. It's happening, it seems to be happening across the board. Uh, let's get the children out of the main worship. You know, worship needs to be for adults. Children are disturbing. You know, I know one particular religion, uh, Christianity, uh, they're supposed to have children in all the time, uh, but they're driving them out. Uh, how do you expect children to learn to be adults if they don't get to watch adults, if they don't get to participate in spiritual activities? Family-friendly churches, where are you? Don't drive the children out. You need to be bringing them in. If you can't hear the preacher, set up in the front, you know. Let's get family-friendliness back. One thing in Mecklenburg County that is free and family friendly that I thank God for, and that's the libraries. I talk a lot about libraries in here, talk a lot about the movies, and we'll have some movies on tonight, uh, critiquing them. Uh, old movies, classic movies, but library. You got books, you got movies, the price is great, you know, it costs nothing but going in and getting a card. Uh, that's probably the key family-friendly thing that I see in Mecklenburg County and City of Charlotte's libraries. Thank God for that. Bottom line, let's take the dollar out of value and family values. Let's make Charlotte and Mecklenburg County, and let's make the rest, I'd make the rest of this country a family-friendly place. And that's the way I feel. Yeah.
And with that, what I'd like to do is uh, we got two of the three musketeers. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Two of the three. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, band members here, Jeff and Trip and Dave may show up for uh, a uh, part of the show. Who knows? He'll slide on in with his pipes. And uh, we're going to turn over there for some tunes, and we're going to double up on some extra music tonight. So uh, have at it, guys. Looking forward to it. The day that they're gonna throw it back to you By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do well, I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now Backbeat, the word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out well, I'm sure you've heard it all before but you never really had a doubt Everybody feels the way I do about you now And all the roads we had to walk were winding And all the lights that lead the way were blinding and There are many things that I would like to say to you But I don't know how Throw it back to you By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do well, I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now Cause all the roads we had to walk were winding And all the lights to lead the way were blinding and there are many things that I to you, but I don't know how, cause maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me, cause after all. Excellent tunes. Uh, we're gonna bring the guys on over tonight. We're gonna do some chatting. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, I was almost getting ready to take a drink there when you cut the music off. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> one of the things that uh, I always like to do while they're over here playing is uh, do a movie review. Before we do that, though, I got a new quote. You can actually, I want to see if I can get myself in the quote book. So wherever okay. they are. This is a quote you wrote. This is a quote I wrote. And it's inspired from many things in life. Merriment is a necessity. Well, yeah. But not everybody sees that, though. No, no, I think See, it is. There's a lot, a lot of these agree. movies that I watch. Right. It's pure merriment. It's for enjoyment. Nothing esoteric, no no holistic, family-oriented. Something you know, to learn something about. Something to take the day's yeah. pain and turn it into a dull I mean, ache. like, you know. That's all we need. That's about it. I, no, pure merriment, pure escapism. Merriment is a necessity. Um, so that's that's the slogan and the, the quote. I'll and, uh, that. I'll have that, I guess, that if I have a tombstone. Mm -hmm. We'll go there. Meanwhile, uh, bumper stickers. 
That should would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty Meanwhile. good tattoo material. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You got hey, room right there. Yeah. Well, especially for guys that actually ever put Mary on their, you know, they can go <laughs> right. ahead and the right. and, and go. Oh. <laughs> I got a film for you, Jeff. Okay. You'll know this one. Oh, okay. I'm, 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 I've got another one. That's a funky Odds one are. Uh, you will know this one. But this, I mean, this is a neat movie. If we get a get a shot on this one, and I, I'll read it, and then I'll. Okay. <clears throat> Stanley Kubrick's. Uh, Classic comedy about a group of war-eager military men who plan a nuclear apocalypse is both funny and frightening and seems as relevant today. This is the interesting thing. It's relevant today (laughs) as it was uh, ever. Uh, Stars um, Sterling Hayden, and it also stars... um, George C. Scott, and one of my favorite people actually in it is uh, Slim Pickens. Oh, he's great. It's cool. Classic. He's, the, he's the pilot of one of the bombers. <laughs> Peter Sellers has about three or four roles. Right. He's the president. He's this doctor. And um, this is from the public library. You can go like this. It's so cool thing. Go to the library and get get cool movies. Um, and it is Dr. Strangelove. Dr. Strangelove. Yeah. Excuse me. I didn't even say yeah. it. Um, or this How is I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the, the bomb. bomb. Excellent. <laughs> I knew you would know the end of this. When I was Stanley Kubrick, I knew you know. Sure, but so, it's a classic. Uh, it's a classic film. Uh, it's black, black and white, so you can appreciate it. Intentionally. Some, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's actually re- fairly reasonable. I mean, you know, with regard to when color yeah. came out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was uh, 67. But it's a cool again. film. You know, I, I love, I always love Slim Pickens, actually. Uh, is this pilot of uh, the plane. Right, the bomb. And, and they, go, they go in to drop the bomb. Have you seen the movie? No. Well, anyway, you know who Slim Pickens is, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, Slim there. Pickens, he's the pilot wearing his cowboy hat, flying this bomber, you know, at whatever, uh, something, 20,000 feet. They're going to drop a, nu- a nuke, you know. Yeah. And uh, it won't drop. It's stuck in the bay. Yeah. You know. So he was the one for why the pilot would, of course, but that makes the movie. He goes to the back of the bo- uh, the. the you know, the Bombay or whatever, and gets on the bomb and is jumping up and down on it, and, it and finally it lets go. Stuff. And he's on the bomb. He he <laughs> so he's riding it. down, and, and the good, he's playing this cowboy. So he's got his hat, and he's on the bomb, and he's, yeah, and that's, he's going to his maker or whatever. <laughs> you should see it. And, he rides, <laughs> and he's riding it down <laughs> like he's riding a bull. It. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a black comedy, I mean, you know, but it's a neat movie. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a sort of a classic. Um, sort of. Sort of. And if you don't like it, you know who to blame. George. George. Blame George. Blame George I was looking George, back over. I got my letter for those of you that um, <laughs> hadn't even been paying attention to the people out there watching us. Uh, I'm having fun. Right. I'm having fun. Anyway, um, I was flashing back over the letter I got from the White House. Uh-huh. And they, they turned me down on coming in for the anniversary that still right. says, you know, producer, creator, host. Yeah, that's great. You know, that's that's just, great. I told you not to use my name in there, but no, you went ahead and yeah, did. Well, it. you know, whatever. So said so. No. Um, <laughs> I have not done any work. We talked about a, a modern Renaissance man DVD. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I haven't done anything really, but okay. yeah, uh, we'll see about that coming. Uh, we have our Weenie blog site, uh, Weenie website. Blog is geek for Weenie. Oh, is it yeah, really? Yeah, Weenie okay. website. Because uh, it's not a full blown website. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the thing there. So anyway, yeah, uh, mrmtv.org. Uh, we got information about the band, information about the shows. If you're interested in coming down, uh, send me an email. Maybe work something out. We got a little bit of audience tonight, sort of surprised mm-hmm. in, which is sort of nice. Uh, you can always email me at mrm at together.net. You can get the uh, the guys' websites They're on there too. You got triprogers.com and you got gilwarning.com. Um, and we, we also have, since we were the last people in the known universe to have a MySpace account, the band now officially has a MySpace. MySpace.com. I got something to talk about Gale MySpace in the, in the next show. So we're on there now. So, so we'll come be our that. friends. And uh, anyway, we haven't done this. We need to do this. Let's see yeah. if it's going to work. Uh, is it even going to come on? Uh, oh. That's the whole thing about the host cam. It's unpredictable. The, uh, the best girl yeah. is away from town. So she we actually noticed. always does the Roman host cam stuff. So it says, please wait. Don't wait. Play. There we go. Now you hear the beep on TV. So make sure. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we invented the host cam. When was that? October? I'm, yeah. yeah last yeah. year? October of last and, year. Uh, almost a year. So there, there's the audience out there. Uh, I'll have to edit some of that. You guys got wave. One person you're the, see. You're so wave. The you're on TV. Wave. Now's your spot. <laughs> the camera people hate Now's me. Now's your spot. And, and uh, so anyway. Uh, come over here and make sure we get you guys. Right, right. Here we are. And uh, it's sort of fun editing this in. You know, I'm sure it is. It's pretty cool. And, you know, it's I can a... zoom in and get there and come back out. And then let's, let's zoom in there and all the children running, screaming, crying out of the room. And, uh, ooh. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, there's the host cam. Uh, <laughs> if you don't like it, tell George. 
Right. Um, <laughs> <and> George, <laughs> no, but it's you can fault. send him an email about it. That's right. Send him an email. Um, but they say they get millions of emails, and so it's hard for them to respond to that. So if you want to give them a response, send them an invitation to something. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think then, gonna, then we'll come to your party. Then we'll come to your party. We'll all actually yeah, come we to your did party yeah. um, for a fee, entertain, talk about things that you want to talk about or whatever. Play That's music right. We're either. available for parties. <laughs> for another fee, we'll leave. Yeah, yeah. For another fee, we'll leave. <laughs> And we can't say all that because that's advertising. We don't do it for free. Just invite us to your party. We're a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to start thinking about throwing some outtakes maybe in some Roman host cam uh, on okay. the back ends of some okay. stuff maybe. So I might start right. seeing some more of that. So you might see some of that this show. I don't know. But uh, I've seen some funny stuff. And uh, the Roman host cam, uh, the best girl, Kate Coburn, she's getting uh-huh. out and about and some stuff. She's got some neat stuff of y'all out in the lobby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chatting one there's, day. There, there's so, a little uh, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm watching it. It's okay. <laughs> You know, I, Anyways, you might see some of that. I actually saw an, an episode from uh, several weeks ago of the Modern Renaissance Band, and uh, we had taped it back just after January, I believe, and there was a certain prediction in there that I had made that actually, by the time the show aired, had come true. How was that? At the time, it had been revealed that uh, you know this administration, current political administration, was wiretapping half of the mm-hmm. people in this country, and I said at that time, that when by the time the show actually aired three months later, that probably everybody would be wiretapped. And well, I personally, was right. I was yeah. right. Yeah. Well, I personally, right. I think they've probably been wiretapping everybody for years and years. Well, it's just yeah, he got caught. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but exactly. But you know. So you know, he's just he got caught listening on the line. So I think I might. Speaking of politics here, might have a market for, in this in this predicting thing. What, I don't know. what does the second lady do? You know, we have the first lady. <laughs> you might, you might, what does what does Miss Cheney do these days? Uh, you know, you don't hear much about. You know, you used to hear about uh, a little Cons- bit about Gores. Console like, their daughter. You know, I mean, oh, no. I think that's probably got to be the best place to be in Washington. You look at it. You don't. You're not on the spot. You don't have to deal with anybody. You're not in the limelight. But you got a neat house, and you got servants, and you got people to protect you. That's great. Show up at a few functions. <laughs> yeah, it was, well, you know, and you play, somebody's paying for your clothes. That's a really good question, Ben. The second lady. I'm gonna see if I can get that job. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I could be. I'd like to be third boy or something. That would be fine. <laughs> Here's some fun. Something I was thinking of uh, recently after being at the beaches from my When I die, if I if I die and I go to the wrong place, if I, if I go to hell, which I clearly say that, right, no. it's going to be Carowinds. <laughs> I have come to the conclusion uh, that I'll be standing in line forever and ever <laughs> and ever. Carowinds. And, and, and waiting in line to get to the torture. No, it'll be, and then, it, no, then when I actually get there, then they're going to send me back to another line. No, it'll be the water park, and you'll never get there. That's what your torture in hell will be. But that's be got, that's got water to be, park. That's got to be never get the there. afterlife in Hades. It sends yeah. you there. Um, <laughs> speaking of that, let's move on to the uh, one of the things we want to talk about was the beach stuff. The, uh, the pavilion is dying. You're seeing this show, I'm not sure, uh, the third, third week of Friday. I mean, third uh, Friday of uh, September. Mm-hmm. Myrtle Beach Pavilion is dying September 30th. So you got about 10 days to boogie down there if you want to see it. Uh, part of the reason I bring this up is that this is the first place that I actually danced in public. Uh, for the first time at 12 years old, a place called the Magic Attic, mm-hmm. which now I think they just call the Attic now. Right. Um, it's a great place. It was a place for teens to hang out. It was an alcohol-free bar, I mean not bar, but alcohol-free music place, right. disco kind of thing. Uh, plus, then you have across the street, you have the uh, amusement park. So all of that, all of that's being blown away, mm-hmm. and nobody's saying yet. We'll see if they announce about the time the show airs. Closer. What's going to be there? Ah. And it was just in the Charlotte paper, and there was no mention. Although this one guy down there, that's one of the bar- barter barkers or whatever at the at the pavilion, said he thinks it's going to be condos, uh, which they talked about ten years ago. Wouldn't surprise me. So, wouldn't surprise me at all. Family friendly is dying there, Myrtle Beach. So what's some things? You grew up going to uh, the beach trip. What's uh, what's something there two that you words, can share? Two words. Sugar Creek. Sugar Creek. <laughs> Remember man. those guys? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They mm. ruled at the attic, man. Yeah, indeed. I indeed. think anybody probably ever went down there to it, probably saw them. Oh, we saw uh, them all over Charlotte and then go down there and watch them, too. Yeah. And then in the, in the early and mid-'80s, they would come up to uh, Greenville, North Carolina, North Carolina, and play there. So you know, one of the things, I don't know if you remember... Um, uh, as they had this, uh, it came from the St. Louis World's Fair, and it's one of those all mechanical pipe band. And I can't remember Steel what they call them. Steel no, band. no, this is no, this is no people. 
The singer was fully automated. It's like oh, a okay. player piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said they had drums and cymbals and... Like a one-man band uh, would do this. It's, it's, it's a huge thing, though. It's mechanical. It was a huge thing. It's like a pipe organ with cymbals and things. You probably saw it and just didn't realize when you walked by it if it wasn't playing. But it's right there in the middle of the... As soon as you walk in the entrance to the uh, amusement park, part of the pavilion, oh. it's right there in the front. They've had it closed for the last few years. Uh... And I get, it'll be gone. And I don't well. know where it's going. No. And this thing was built in the 1800s. I think we need to go and, uh, get it. <laughs> that's right. I think we and need the to carousel take the, down there. The it was done in the 1800s. Out of the van and so, we'll, we'll go down to Motor um, Beach. Be if nice you're show, watching this man. show, if yeah. you can get down to the beach, get down there and go by the pavilion and, and say your farewells to uh, a landmark. Um, they're sort of like Charlotte's turning into. If you've got a nice Ugh. landmark, any kind of traditions in history, uh, let's just, just tear, it down, tear it down, put something stealing mm-hmm. glass uh, up. That's that's the price of, uh, I guess, prosperity. Hey, you uh, know what my best memory of Myrtle Beach was, mm-hmm. or is? I was conceived there. And you remember that? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's definitely made an impression on me. I bet so. It affected your life, definitely. Okay, well, so I think on, on the conceived note, we'll uh, <laughs> where we need to go before these stories get worse. <laughs> Let's go out on some tunes. Oh, okay. Because uh, we're right. rolling out of time and I'm abusing it up. So, y'all go ahead and as uh, soon as you play, start cranking it up and uh, then bring up the volume. What I want to do is, uh, like always, I want to thank my volunteers for coming down here. Uh, they work hard for pizza and water and, uh, and help put on the show. Dano, you're the man, my director. I promoted Dean Smart to audio management assistant director. Dean, uh, they've both been with me the full year, going on here now into our second. Uh, all the camera people, thanks a lot. I'm glad to have some audience participation. My name's Ben Copeland, I'm the Modern Renaissance Band. We come on this public access channel, first and third Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Check out the website, mrmtv.org. Thank you and have a good evening. Let's finish off with some food. Until you use me up.